The question is that the bill will be now read a second time. The member for Gilmore. Well, I'm incredibly excited today to, in, to talk in support of the Higher Education Support Amendment 2022 Measures No. 1 Bill. Uh, I am pleased that this bill is helping to support students with fairer grandfathering provisions for job-ready graduates. As a former TAFE teacher, I know how important education is, and we need to make sure that our rules are fair and clear. Students shouldn't be lumped with fees that they weren't expecting because our laws aren't clear enough or because their university made decisions to change or cancel their courses. So that is an important change. But, Deputy Speaker, what I'm really excited about with this bill is the new provisions to encourage employment and retention of doctors and nurse practitioners in rural, regional and very remote areas of Australia. This fantastic bill is taking real action, innovative action, to address the GP shortage we are facing across regional and rural Australia, but in particular in my electorate of Gilmore on the New South Wales south coast. What it means is that doctors and nurse practitioners will be incentivised to live and work in regional Australia and rural Australia by having their university debt waived if they stay long enough, not just if they come for a short while, but if they come for a long while. Medical degrees certainly don't come cheap, but the Albanese government is helping to reduce that cost. And the only catch, not that I would call it a catch really, is that you have to work in regional Australia. As someone who has spent my whole life in regional Australia, I can tell you that is not a bad deal at all. The South Coast is the most magnificent place on earth. Why wouldn't you want to uh, live and work there? This is truly something to be celebrated, but to really understand why this change is so important, I think it's important to understand the scale of the problem we are facing. So I want to talk a little bit, bit about the difficulties local people have had in accessing a doctor. Deputy Speaker, the shortage of doctors in regional and rural Australia has been escalating for years. Local GPs are overworked and struggling to cope in a system that isn't supporting them, with a hospital system that is broken and with an ageing population that increasingly needs more care and support. The major hospitals in my electorate are in desperate need of upgrades. The Yurubadala has been waiting for a new hospital for years. We have been fighting to make that a level four hospital against a state government that has continually played down the health needs of this community. The Shoalhaven Hospital is chronically at the top 10 of a number of lists, but it's nothing to celebrate. Top 10 in the state for the longest emergency department wait times and the worst hospital for rostering. Only 46 per cent of patients having their treatment start on time and only 47 per cent leaving within four hours. The list goes on. Chronic underfunding from Liberal state and federal governments for years and years. The trouble is it's a negative feedback loop. The fewer GPs, the more pressure on hospitals, and the more pressure on hospitals means more pressure on GPs, a system that can't cope. Local people either have to travel great distances or, in many cases, go without, leading to more serious health complications. We need more GPs. Local doctors in our community have been demanding change for a long time, pointing out quite rightly that the incentives for getting GPs in regional areas have just not been fit for purpose. When I first, was first elected to parliament in 2019, I joined with many members of the Churos Head community to raise concerns about the closure of the Queen Street Medical Centre in Churos Head. The wonderful Churos Head Progress Association presented me with a five-page submission on the negative impacts this decision would have on the local community, about the domino effect the closure would have on retail businesses, on patients and on the broader community. Queen Street Medical Practice has its main centre in Maruya and at the time had satellites in Browley and Churos Head. When the local doctor left, they struggled to recruit a new one. There weren't enough incentives, not enough reasons to attract doctors to small places like Churos Head. Hard to imagine given how beautiful the area is.
not to mention the pressures the former government's Medicare cuts were placing on GP practices. We're working on that too, another big but important task. So, that sadly, the Churros head practice closed. This is an ageing population with more people over 65 than under, but all too often they have to travel great distances for medical care. Now they would have to travel just to see their GP. The flow on would also mean local people don't use the local pharmacy, they don't stop by the local bakery, they don't grab a coffee from the local cafe. They would instead do all of this in a larger town, putting even more pressure on the small local Turos head shops. Flow on impacts all from the loss of a doctor. As an ageing population, many also don't drive. This means, for many people, they might avoid or delay seeing their doctor, which we know leads to more health complications. It's just simply not good enough. I, along with many others, was relieved when finally in 2020 a doctor from Sydney came to the rescue, <coughs> opening a practice once more in Churros Head. This doctor could see the huge need in regional communities and was spurred into action after the COVID pandemic at his own cost and taking a decision that actually didn't make business sense, but deciding to act for the good of others. I can tell you, Deputy Speaker, that is an attitude we know well on the South Coast, a truly selfless community. We welcome this new doctor with open arms. But sadly, Churros Head is not an isolated example. Last year, Sanctuary Point lost its last GP because the amazing Dr Kate Manderson, who runs a few centres around the Shoalhaven, could not find a doctor to replace the retiring GP there. As many of the GPs retired, she had just been unable to find and recruit new ones. I have met with Dr Kate on many occasions to hear her views on how we can address the issues facing local GPs. She has lots of great ideas, and we are connecting those through to the Minister for Health, who is very receptive to how we can improve regional and rural access to GPs. I always appreciate the time Dr Kate takes to share her thoughts with me on important local issues. Annette Pham, who runs another set of local practices, also had the same issue at her practice. They have struggled to recruit and keep local doctors. They could see the problems and have so many ideas to fix the issues. Both Annette and Dr Kate advocated strongly to improve incentives for recruiting and retaining GPs in regional areas like ours. They advocated for years to have the distribution priority area updated for our community, and I joined them in that fight. The former government removed the DPA status of Nowra Bomber in Sussex Inlet three years ago, and the case for undoing that was clear from the start. I advocated strongly to the former minister about this, raising that concern here in the parliament, writing to the minister and begging him to change our status. We were absolutely thrilled to see that change finally happen in February this year. A huge win for our community, a hard-fought win, but it was a long fight, and that one change is not enough to make up for the loss of doctors in our community. A lot of damage was done in that time. Dr Kate and Annette continue to be fierce advocates for how we can address this issue. Together, we also managed to advocate for a reintroduction of Medicare Item 288 video telehealth psychiatry consultations in regional and rural Australia. The former government removed this important bulk build service. It was a heartless decision that many local doctors and patients raised concerns with me about. People told me how they had been um, put into a dark place because they couldn't afford to see their psychiatrist anymore. They could no longer afford to get their prescriptions renewed. They were abandoned by a government who did not understand the health care needs of regional Australia. Together with local doctors and patients, our advocacy saw that reinstated by the Albanese government. I was so delighted about that, and many people contacted me to say how relieved they were. So the voices of local doctors really do make a difference to the policies that we deliver. I was pleased to welcome Annette, her husband, Dr Hal Pham, and other advocates from their service to Parliament House last week to meet with the Health Minister and continue their advocacy. They want to see more doctors becoming GPs. They want to see bulk billing increased again after years of cuts. They are fighting for vulnerable people, and our government is listening. I will be welcoming Dr Kate very soon as well so she can share her thoughts on GPs and aged care, because I know their voices are crucial to getting this right. I want to sincerely thank them and every local doctor, nurse, medical practitioner for your advocacy on these critical issues. 
In my time as member for Gilmore, literally hundreds of people have contacted me to say they can't find a GP. People are travelling hours in the wrong direction just to see a doctor, or ending up in our already overloaded hospital system. GP access has been spiralling out of control for far too long, um, made worse by cuts to Medicare and a decade of mismanagement by a Liberal government who wouldn't prioritise access to health care. Fundamentally, they did not believe in Medicare. So I am absolutely delighted that today we are taking one more serious step in the right direction to recruit and keep doctors in our regional communities. Once again, I like to think that it is the ideas of our community on the south coast that has contributed towards this important reform. In my recent Jobs and Skills Summit survey conducted in the lead-up to the summit in September, many people suggested that removing or reducing education debts for people who work and stay in regional and rural areas was the way to go. Janita said, and I quote, provide subsidies for relocation and providing hex relief to those who commit to staying and working in rural communities. Gina said, and I quote, reduce the hex debt of bonded medical students who come to the regions. There, these were two amongst many similar suggestions. Well, Janita and Gina, that is exactly what this bill will do. If this bill passes from 1 January next year, eligible doctors and nurse practitioners will have their help debts reduced or wiped if they live and work in areas like the South Coast for the equivalent length of their degree. Doctors and nurse practitioners who meet half of the time requirements will be able to access half of the help debt removal. This is fantastic news. Moving to regional and rural Australia is no easy task for someone who has never lived here before, so we need to encourage them, not just for a short time but for a long time, to encourage them to put down some roots, build a network of family and friends and live their lives here. Zero hex debt is a strong incentive for a young doctor or nurse practitioner to try regional Australia, particularly in this economic climate. And I know that in a beautiful area like the South Coast, there are more than a few reasons to stay. This is one step in the right direction. It's one part of a suite of changes we are working on to address our GP crisis across regional Australia. Deputy Speaker, I'm delighted that the recent budget is also delivering a Medicare urgent care clinic for the Batemans Bay region. Providing bulk build medical care in this community will make a huge difference to local people. We hope to see more of these clinics rolled out over time, but I am really pleased Batemans Bay will be one of the first. The Albanese government is going to continue working hard to improve health services and health outcomes for regional and rural communities like ours on the New South Wales south coast. This bill today is so incredibly important. We need to incentivise more doctors into our communities. And I say to any studying doctor or nurse practitioner, if you want a free degree, why not come and live on the sunny south coast? We have beaches, we have mountains, we have valleys, we even have a rainforest, and we have the best community in Australia. We will welcome you with open arms, so give us a shot. I commend this bill to the House.